Today I'd like to talk about mediocrity in Christian media and how it's received by Christians. But before we jump right in, I'd like to make two things very clear. First of all, I'm in no way referring to lukewarm Christianity. And second, this video is partially based on my personal opinions. Something you think is great, I might find average, and something I think is great, you might find average. That's completely fine. The focus of this video is to not only discuss how Christians see mediocrity in Christian media, but to also talk about the dangers of celebrating or encouraging mediocre quality in Christian media. I guess the best place to start would be the situation that inspired me to make this video in the first place. Around six months ago, I uploaded a review of two supposed freestyles by the Christian rapper Zanti called the God First Freestyles. I wasn't expecting it to gain much traction because my past videos on Zanti only did okay. But right after the first day that I put it up, I saw this big rise in viewership and dislikes. Keep in mind that I'm a very small YouTuber, so by big rise, I mean just a few hundred views. I didn't understand at first why the video got mostly dislikes. I made a couple honest jokes about Zanti, but I never got disrespectful. And it's not like I gave either of the songs a bad score, since in the end I gave them both a 6 out of 10. Well, as it turns out, the reason why most people didn't like my review wasn't because they didn't like the video quality or they thought that Zanti deserved a higher score, it's because I had anything negative to say about Zanti in the first place. In the comment section, I was told to shut my judgmental mouth up and how I had no right to criticize Zanti's music because he's such a kind, uplifting, hardworking person whose music helped them through hard times. I tried to explain to them that I was only criticizing Zanti's music and not Zanti himself as a person, but to no avail. As this commenter put it after our little back and forth, well, all I'm saying is that if you come after fans' favorite artists, we won't back down. I think that statement pretty much summed up the situation and made it clear to me that no matter how respectful I tried to be, as long as I didn't share their highly favorable opinion, they'd have a problem with me. After these altercations, I got to thinking about this behavior on a large scale. If a part of Zanti's fanbase acts this way for him, even though he's not a huge figure in Christian media, then there must be similar behavior on a bigger level when it comes to Christian properties and creators who are more popular. The golden question is, where does this behavior come from? What would cause someone to have such strong reactions to my criticism? As far as I can see, it stems from ideas and beliefs that have been passed along in church and Christian culture for many years now. Ideas like if they're doing it for God, then support them, and if you don't have anything good to say, then don't say anything at all. Basically ideas discouraging all criticism against Christian media and encouraging the acceptance of all media that is quote unquote Christian enough, regardless of its objective quality. Because no, not all Christian acts are welcome under this umbrella free from criticism. Notably harder variations of Christian rap and all of Christian metal is excluded since most of Christian church culture don't accept them as Christian enough. Which leads into the next question of what does it mean to be Christian enough? Simply put, in order for something to be Christian enough, it needs to be accepted by the church. Examples of media that have been deemed Christian enough are most post-2000 Christian movies, gospel music, Christian contemporary music, worship music, soft Christian rock, and on rare occasions, soft Christian rap. From a young age, many Christians are taught to have a biased love for this media simply because it's Christian. Church culture wants as many eyes on their standard of Christianity as possible, so they're careful to only promote the most inoffensive and safest entertainment out there. To them, I guess they see their culture as not only a good entertainment space for Christians, but also a good way to encourage believers and non-believers alike to study the Word of God. Although I believe it has served both purposes for many people, I also think that church culture's methods have created, or at the very least, influenced some problems for the Christian space. First off are the bad or average movies and music. I'm sure Christians are tired of hearing non-Christians tell them how bad or average their entertainment is, but if we're being honest here, some of the blame for the continuance of this narrative should be placed on Christians themselves. Thanks to them dismissing any less than positive criticism as taboo, a lot of average or just straight up bad media has been able to not only find an audience but also thrive commercially in the Christian space. A lot of the music is basic, shallow, repetitious, and at times just straight up corny. While the movies suffer from way too much focus on the message and not nearly enough focus on the other aspects in order to actually make the movie good. There's a lot of bland acting, thinly structured plots, over-reliance on movie logic, and some of the worst dialogue you'll ever hear in your life. 
at the end of the day any of these properties being good or bad is of course up to the personal opinion of the consumer but if after listening and watching a lot of christian media especially the media that's being promoted by church culture you still come to the conclusion that it's all good and you don't have any constructive criticism for anybody then you're just lying to yourself the second problem that I think church culture has contributed to is Christian creators not being pushed hard enough to do their best. I think there are a lot of talented Christians out there who would be releasing way better material if they weren't being held back by church culture. The majority of their fan base is satisfied simply by their output being Christian enough. So whatever quality of material they have to offer is not only accepted but praised to the highest degree. This is especially true about the audience that mostly watches Christian movies. Over the years it's gotten so bad over there that I'd honestly rather go straight to a non-Christian critic over my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ because at least they're more likely to give me honest, fair critique instead of spending a whole 5 star review telling me how great the message is. Once some Christian creators see that they're commercially successful and receiving constant praise from their audience, then they won't see a need to try anything new or improve in any areas. This leads to the formulaic and mediocre entertainment that we see is prevalent in the Christian space today. It's become so deceptively easy to attract and satisfy a Christian audience that even secular creators have taken notice and tried their hand. For example, in 2018, Snoop Dogg decided to release a gospel album called Bible of Love. Thanks to the music being mostly traditional gospel, it was well accepted by church culture. That's not to say that it was a big success. On the contrary, Bible of Love only sold around 17,000 copies in the US, but that was enough for it to top the gospel albums chart for 7 weeks and become the 4th best selling gospel album in the US that year. It's not hard to understand why some creators, Christian or not, decide to play it safe and fit the mold that the church wants them to fit. Because in the end, they either get a lot of praise, a lot of success, or a combination of both. Either way, it's a guaranteed positive outcome. Christian media could be in a way better place artistically, but as long as Christian audiences remain dismissive against constructive criticism and are willing to line up money in hand for any random person saying the right buzzwords, then artistically we'll remain in the same mediocre place we've been in for at least the past decade. The lack of criticism and this whole if they're doing it for God then support them attitude has led some people to display stand-like behavior when it comes to Christian entertainment. Behavior like dismissing your opinion as hatred simply because it's not as positive as theirs and treating every negative thing you say about the artist's work as a personal attack on the artist themselves. I feel like I'm starting to repeat myself so in conclusion, fellow Christians, when it's all said and done, any of our media being good or bad is up to our personal opinions. Thus, whenever someone shares one that we don't agree with, as long as it's not clear hatred, we should respect it and not take everything so personal. We need to start using more critical thinking when it comes to our entertainment and stop settling for and accepting low quality, simply because it's Christian enough. All creators need to hear both the positive and negative aspects about their art because it could help them realize something about it that they were blind to before. In a nutshell, prioritize the message and the art itself equally. Be honest to yourselves and to others and respect other people's right to have an opinion that's different from yours.